I want to welcome you to the Hama Springs Community Presbyterian Church Zoom worship service today. A reminder, today is Communion Sunday, so please grab some bread or cracker, juice or wine for later in the service when we gather at God's table. I invite you to prepare your hearts and minds for worship as we listen to the prelude. Go ahead. Nice to see your talented hands at work for us. A couple of announcements this morning. The first is that uh, Susanna is still working on getting a time and a day for a social gathering outside of worship. If you're interested in that, you can contact her and she'll be sending an email around uh, to invite people to that. Uh, another announcement, uh, again, if you got here late, this is Communion Sunday, so please grab some kind of bread or cracker and juice or wine for communion later in the service. And last but not least, um, we're going to be starting a new series next week called Beguiled by Beauty, and here's a trailer for the series. Sunday, Beguiled by Beauty, Cultivating a Life of Contemplation and Compassion, a worship 
series and also uh, a weekly discussion group. More about that will come. As always during Zoom worship, please remain muted uh, unless you happen to be speaking. Uh, use the chat room to ask questions, offer prayer, concerns, express love to one another. And yes, you can use the chat room during the message. Turn on your video. We want to see your smiling face because you're a beautiful creation of God. And remember, Grace, this will not be perfect. Let us join together now and sing our first song of the day here in this space. The words will be on your screen. digital space where we worship together. Let us continue. I invite you now to join together and offer a prayer for hungry times. Suzanne will be leading us in this prayer. May you all join in this prayer. God, our sustainer, Pour your powerful spirit into all who are empty today. Fill the hearts of persons who are troubled. Fill the minds of men and women who are confused. Fill the stomachs of your children who are hungry. Fill the souls of people who are feeling lost. Fill the lives of all who need you but do not know you. 
May your spirit fill us to overflowing. May we be inspired to share our abundance with others so that there will be no more empty hearts and minds, stomachs and souls. We pray in the name of Jesus who fills lives with your endless grace. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Suzanne. Well, I'd like to invite Shiloh and any other kids to join me for a time of conversation. I'm going to stop screen share in a second so I can see your smiling face and you can see mine. There she is. Hey, Shiloh, how are you this morning? Shiloh, unmute yourself. How are you this morning? Hi, yeah, how are you? Hey. You're good? Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. So Shiloh, today I'm going to be talking about sourdough faith, sourdough bread. Do you know what that tastes like? Have you ever had some? No. no? Well, hold on a second. Let me give you some here. Hold on. Here, take this. Can you get it from him? <laughs> Take it, need it. Oh, wait, this isn't going to work. This isn't going to work. Hey, Eliza, do you have any sourdough bread around the house? Sourdough bread. Look, you have some. Yay. I'm so glad. Take a taste of it. Tell me what it tastes like. It tastes like sourdough bread. It tastes like sourdough bread. Oops. Get something on the screen. Does it taste kind of tangy? Yeah, it tastes like sourdough bread. It tastes like sourdough bread. Well, that's good. Well, sourdough is a really special bread. It's been around, they think, since the time of the Egyptians, way back in ancient I'm Egypt. I'm eating it. I'm eating it. You're eating it good. Does it taste good? Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell a story a little bit later about how it got here to America. It came by way of the French and uh, the gold rush up in Alaska back in the 1800s. But it's been around. It's probably one of the oldest kind of breads in the world. And all kinds of people have been eating it. And guess where it lives when it's not, when you, before you make it? You have to keep it alive in your house it's called a starter and you keep it alive by feeding it just like we feed ourselves we're pinching it you're tasting it yum we're can, I have, it. can i have some <laughs> mm, I'm, I'm so good so good well think about sourdough and we're going to continue worshiping together and enjoy that. And we'll have some more during communion in a little bit. And bread always reminds us about God. Because God is the best gift of life there is. Let me go back to here. And go back to screen sharing. All right, I invite you now to listen to God's word in a dramatic reading of Exodus 16. The words will be on your screen if you want to follow along. Suzanne, unmute yourself, please. I'm just chatting away, sorry. Our first reading from God's Word is Exodus chapter 16, verses 3 through 7 and 13 through 21. This will be a dramatic reading from the Common English Translation. The words will be on your screen, as Pastor said. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. The whole Israelite community complained against Moses and Aaron in the desert 
the Israelites said to them, Oh, how... Oh, how we wish that the Lord had just put us to death while we were still in the land of Egypt. There we could sit by the pots cooking meat and eat our fill of bread. Instead, you have brought us into this desert to starve this whole assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to make bread rain down from the sky for you. The people will go out each day and gather just enough for that day. In this way, I'll test them to see whether or not they follow my instruction. On the sixth day, when they measure out what they have collected, it will be twice as much as they collected on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, This evening you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you will see the Lord's glorious presence because your complaints against the Lord have been heard. Who are we? Why blame us? In the evening a flock of quail flew down and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew all around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the desert surface were thin flakes, as thin as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? They didn't know what it was. Moses said to them, This is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Collect as much of it as each of you can eat, one omer per person. You may collect for the number of people in your household. The Israelites did as Moses said, some collecting more, some less. But when they measured it out by the omer, the ones who had collected more, nothing left over. And the ones who had collected less had no shortages. Everyone collected just as much as they could eat. Moses said to them, Don't keep any of it until morning. But they didn't listen to Moses. Some kept part of it until morning, but it became infested with worms and stank. Moses got angry with them. Every morning they gathered it as much as each person could eat, but when the sun grew hot, it melted away. The word of God for your life and mine. Thanks be to Thanks God. Be God. Our second reading from God's word is Matthew 13, 33. I'll be sharing again the Common English translation. The words will be on your screen. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Jesus told them another peril, parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast, which a woman took and hid in a bushel of wheat flour until the yeast had worked its way through all the dough. The word of God for your life and mine. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Don't forget to unmute yourself, readers. I mean to mute yourself, readers. Well, as I was telling Shiloh, today we're going to talk about sourdough, and particularly sourdough faith. So let me pause our screen sharing so you can see my smiling face. And I invite everybody to join me for a prayer. God, we hear these ancient stories, a story of the Israelites grumbling and complaining in the desert about needing food to eat and God providing them each and every day with manna and quail. And we hear this parable about the woman hiding leaven in a large amount of flour and it being transformed. Speak to us 
of eternal things. Startle us with your grace and your good news. Help us to understand what it means to be leavened, to have our faith transformed. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart, may it all be acceptable to you, O God, who is our strength and our Savior. Amen. Well, you may not know, but sourdough is on the rise. The pandemic has caused much fear, death, and partisan rancor, but it has also led to a baking revival. The news has noted sourdough surge in popularity. There's even been a shortage of yeast and flour rivaling that of toilet paper. Seems baking bread has helped people cope with the anxieties of these days. One writer confessed that the process of baking sourdough helped her handle the isolation. She said, I have been exhausted, despondent about the death tolls, worried about doctors and nurses and all of those on the front lines. But my starter brings me joy and excitement when I see it bubbling away. Every morning I feed two tablespoons of the starter with equal parts of flour and water. I feel pulled in a dozen directions at every moment, but taking a minute to feed the starter is a respite. It's a small measure of control when so much is out of control. Have any of you begun baking bread over the past four months? If so, raise your hand. A few of us have. Libby and I haven't done it yet, but we've been thinking about it, and I really started thinking seriously about it, preparing for this message today. We haven't started baking, but we have indulged in consuming copious amounts of Bowdoin sourdough twice-baked crackers from Costco. I don't know if you found them yet. We only eat them on the weekend because they're so delicious, she and I can go through a bag in a single day. Now, you may not know, but Bowdoin Bakers has world-famous sourdough. I ate there once when I was on a retreat in San Francisco, and you can smell the place from blocks away. It was started by Isidora Bowden, the son of French master bakers. And he began by using yeast from a miner in the 1890s Klondike Gold Rush. Seems prospectors would carry sourdough starter on their persons to keep the natural fermentation process going. Bowden used some of that starter, and when he did, he noticed that his loaves came out with a new, distinct, sour, tangy flavor. Seems the Foggy City's lactobacillus San Francisco's rich atmosphere, mixed with flour and water, gave birth to a new mother dough, and Bowden Bakery began. Years later, the story goes, and in April of 1906, an earthquake struck San Francisco and fires destroyed most of the city. Bowdoin's widow, Louise, saw the approaching flames, ran and grabbed a wooden bucket and put the mother dough in it and ran off. Eventually, the bakery was reopened. And to this day, every piece of Bowdoin sourdough bread and cracker is made from a portion of that mother dough. And to safeguard it from any other disasters, the dough is stored in fireproof vaults in several places across the city. Now, Bowdoin Bakery isn't the first to worry about its starter. Bakers in first century Palestine had to work at keeping their starters, their leaven, alive. In Jesus' day, if you lost your leaven, you lost your ability to make bread for your family and your community. Jesus' parable of the leaven calls attention to this simple but life-sustaining ingredient. Leaven or yeast or starter was a necessary part of people's everyday existence. And it's a necessary part of our spiritual lives today. In fact, it's so important Jesus likens it to the kingdom of heaven. He says the kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and hid in three measures of flour until all of it was leaven. Makes me wonder, is my life leaven? 
Is your life leavened? Is our church leavened? A leavened spiritual life, just like a leavened church, is created and sustained by a simple and significant ingredient. I call it sourdough faith. It's the kind of faith that not only requires constant care, but ought to be shared. It's a unique faith that transforms individual communities into genuine incarnations of God's kingdom. I'm going to share the recipe with you this morning. First of all, sourdough faith is unique. Sourdough starters are live cultures of natural occurring yeast, lactobacteria, and fungi. The bacteria forms carbon dioxide that causes the dough to rise. It feeds on carbohydrates like flour and sugar, and it produces alcohol or hooch as a byproduct. These microorganisms create the unique, unique flavor of each sourdough starter. In our story from Exodus, the people of Israel were given a unique food, manna. They weren't sure about the taste of this heavenly bread. When they first saw it, they said in Hebrew, man who? which roughly translates, what is this? Biblical scholars have debated about manna for centuries. Some suggest it was the honey-like sap that oozes out of a tamarisk tree limb at certain times of the year. Others say manna was white like coriander seed and tasted like wafers made with honey. Whatever manna was, our story makes clear that this heavenly bread was unique. It was a distinct and special creation of God, just like each and every one of us, and just like our church. We're all a unique creation. So let me ask you this morning, what makes your faith unique? What makes our church unique? In some sourdough starters, people remove the hooch or alcohol that rises to the top. Others keep it in. Some add baking soda if the, sour, if the starter is too sour. Others add apple cider vinegar to give it a boost when it's sick. All of this work affects the taste of the bread. So what flavors your faith? What is unique about your journey, your spiritual gifts, your calling? What makes our congregation unique? Understanding our God-given uniqueness is the first step in becoming incarnations of the kingdom. Sourdough faith is unique. Sourdough faith requires constant care. Sourdough starters are called the bonsai tree of the food world because you must care for it daily. A starter has to be nourished and revitalized by adding equal amounts of water and flour. It's called refreshing or sweetening the starter. Our faith needs to be refreshed and sweetened too. Cowboy cooks kept their sourdough starter in a container called a starter pot. It was an essential part of every chuck wagon back in the day. Our starter pot is the Bible. It contains the essential ingredients we need to refresh and sweeten our faith. And all we have to do is open the good book and use it. In our story from Exodus, a month and a half has passed since the people of Israel were freed from captivity in Egypt, and they're starting to complain. <clears throat> they say Moses and Aaron are starving them to death in the desert. God hears their complaints and promises to provide them food, manna or bread in the morning, and quail in the evening. But there's a hitch. Manna has a short shelf life. God's people can only gather what they need for one day, no more, no less. If they try to save any overnight, it becomes foul-smelling and breeds worms. And if they wait too late to gather it, the manna melts in the sun. The people of Israel have to learn to rely on God for their daily sustenance. They can't store it away. They have to rely on God to provide for them each and every day. The same is true for our sourdough faith, friends. You and I need to return to the source of our spiritual sustenance constantly. 
We need to open our Bibles and trust that God's word will sweeten our spirits. We need to rely on God's word daily. If we do, God promises we will be refreshed as incarnations of the kingdom. Sourdough faith is unique. It requires constant care, and it expands and transforms. Maybe I heard about the man who was working at home during the pandemic. He told his wife, who was a nurse working long hours at the hospital, that he would take over most of the cooking for the family. He did pretty well until he decided to make some sourdough bread. It was his first time baking and he misread the recipe. The recipe called for two ounces of yeast. He put in two cups. After following all the other instructions, he put the dough near the heat and waited for it to rise. When his wife called to ask about the bread, honey, have you put the sourdough in the oven yet? The man replied frantically, put it in the oven. I can't even keep it in the kitchen. Sourdough faith expands and transforms. You can't keep it in an oven or a kitchen. You can't even keep it in the church. It's an expansive culture. And once it's hidden or mixed in, the transformation begins. In our parable, a small quantity of leaven is hidden or mixed in a large amount of flour. Three measures was the equivalent of about 50 or 60 pounds of flour. It was enough to produce bread for hundreds of people. From a tiny beginning like the lump of leaven, tremendous transformation occurred. The changes were not cosmetic, they were organic. Flour, a dry, inert material, became a living, breathing organism that transformed into an entirely new creation, bread. Friends, when you and I let even a little of God's Spirit work in our lives, the results are the same. We are changed. We become something new. We are transformed into incarnations of God's kingdom. Last but not least, sourdough faith must be given away. It must be shared. Carl Griffin of Washington State is known for giving away a sourdough starter. He calls it the Oregon Trail Starter because it was brought over that trail to the West Coast. His family has preserved and shared that starter for over 150 years. Our sourdough faith has been cultivated and preserved for more than 2,000 years. It, all, it has always been something given away. Our faith isn't something we hold on to our, for ourselves. Our faith is something we're called to share, to give ourselves away. Henry Nowen put it this way, as God's beloved, our greatest fulfillment lies in becoming bread for the world. That is the most intimate expression of our deepest desire to give ourselves to each other. Our real gift is not so much what we can do, but who we are. The real question is not what we can offer each other, but who we can be for each other. As I grow older, I discover more and more that the greatest gift I can offer is my own joy of living, my own inner peace, my own silence and solitude, my own sense of well-being. When I ask myself, who helps me most? I must answer, the one who is willing to share his or her life with me. Friends, sourdough faith is unique. It requires constant care. It expands and transforms. It should be shared. As we gather at God's extended table, may we be refreshed and sweetened to practice our sourdough faith and become bread for the world. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Let me go back to screen sharing. Oop, wrong one. Sorry about that. Let's try this again. There we go. All right. I invite you now to prepare your hearts and minds to gather around God's extended table as we sing all who hunger gather gladly. The words will be on your screen. and see that grace is eternal, taste and see that God is good as we gather together and share the Lord's Supper with one another. Let me stop screen sharing for a moment so that we can see one another. I invite you to get your elements together. This loaf and this cup remind us of God's gift in Jesus Christ to us. God invites all of us to come to the extended table, the table that extends out from the communion table behind me into each and every one of our homes, to our desks, to our kitchen tables, to our picnic tables, to wherever we might be gathering. And God's invitation invites those of us from La Cueva and Ponderosa and the Pueblo, from areas one, two, and three, from Oklahoma and from California and from North Dakota to come together to eat and drink and to celebrate God's love. Friends, this is the bread of life, the bread of new birth. And this is the wine of compassion, the wine of joy. Let us eat and drink and celebrate God's love. I invite you to take your bread 
and your cup and dip it and eat together and drink together and celebrate God's love today. And it's okay to eat more than one piece of bread. Eat lots. God's grace is eternal. This sourdough sure is good. Wish I could share it with y'all. Those are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. I'm going to go back to screen sharing so we can continue to commune together in prayer. Oh, wait, we have to do our prayers of the people first. <clears throat> so, does anyone have a prayer concern they'd like to share today? Coming to you, Glenn. Go ahead. I uh, think about the 150,000 or so people who've died of COVID. And according to Beverly here in our own zip code, we don't have one yet, but I'm sure that's coming. Thinking of the, the schools reopening and people in, in prisons and on and on and on worldwide. Um, Lord, have mercy on them and their families. Amen. Well, let us pray together. Lord, hear our prayers. We're coming to you, Shannon, just a second. Uh, James and Susanna emailed me this morning. Um, they're down in Albuquerque at the emergency vet. I guess their dog is having surgery. I, I surmise from being in a fight with a neighborhood dog or something, I'm not sure, but let's offer prayers for a successful surgery and healing for James and Susanna's dog. Let us pray together. Lord, hear our prayers. Okay, Shannon, coming to you. Whoops. Unmute yourself. I don't muted it. Now I got muted again. Uh, Della King uh, has um, a, a mass and behind her eye a tumor that they're going to have to be treating with radiation. They are hoping it's not malignant, but uh, prayers for Della. Yes, definitely. She, like... I did. She faces a very serious treatment coming up. Um, so let's offer prayers for healing for Della and strength and comfort for Butch and the rest of the family. Let us pray together. Lord, hear our prayers. Are there prayer concerns? You can lift your hand or like this or digitally, either one. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Myra. Today is the Pecos also known as St. Persingula Feast Day on Jemez Pueblo. And I have been told that there's no one alive with a memory of never holding a feast day. So these oh. are definitely new, new times. They are celebrating very individually and at home. They're still under a pretty serious lockdown, which didn't, totally protect their zip code, but maybe it's helped protect ours. So yeah. when they do feast, what they're doing is praying for all of the world. Yeah. And they, everyone that I sent a greeting to today, which is about 15 people, um, responded that they are still praying for all of us today. All right. Well, prayers for our brother and sisters down at the Jemez Pueblo for their feast day celebrating at home and for their healing and protection as well. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayers. Eliza, coming to you, unmute yourself. 
so I am just praying for guidance with work again because I am still working but applying to jobs that will match the girls schedule a little better and maybe closer and that sort of thing so okay. I think I'm at eight resumes out so one of those doors will open all right well, we'll pray for discernment and open doors for job opportunities. Let us pray together. Lord, hear our prayers. Other prayer concerns. So, coming to you, go ahead and unmute yourself, Debbie, Bob. Okay, go ahead. So, back to the children and stuff, there's people making very hard decisions about whether they should homeschool, send them to school, like Minnesota and North Dakota, I don't know what it is in New Mexico, but it's like some are a combination of homeschool, some are, you know, Zooming or whatever they're doing, and some are going, like, one of my grandchildren, it's like going Monday and Tuesday to school, but then Zooming the rest of the week, depending on what their alphabet is, so like her last name starts with B, so she goes Monday and Tuesday to the actual school and then, you know, Zooms the, th the other three days. But any children with health concerns is even worse because, like, with her, she has severe asthma. And to wear the mask makes it far worse. And we don't know which – my daughter's just really toying with this because, you know, she's socially – really depressed this child is very depressed and not seeing friends mm -hmm. doesn't live by anyone her age so right. there's no you know way to communicate with other children her age right a very sad situation okay and then make a decision about health as well right. and how many parents are just in limbo as to what's the best and they said if they like start one way they might not be able to change to another way and right. okay you know taking into consideration different variables. Right. And then the right. teachers and everybody in safety, you know, health yeah. concerns for everybody. Okay. It's just a really bad deal. Yeah. All right. Well, let's... Thanks to the children and the teachers. All right. And parents. Thank you. Well, let's offer prayers for, um, for uh, Debbie's granddaughter, who is feeling isolated and lonely, as many children are, I'm sure, these days. And... Pray for teachers, pray for students, pray for administrators, pray for politicians who are all making decisions that will affect kids in school and give them wisdom and discernment and insight in making good choices, healthy choices for all involved. Let us pray together. Lord, hear our prayers. Okay, Myra, coming back to you. I'm going to make a, uh, an announcement in the form of a prayer. <laughs> Those of us who are interested in trying to understand what the Black Lives Matter movement is about and um, understanding for ourselves what anti-racism means are meeting again this Wednesday evening at 5.30. Shannon, can you tell me, did I send out another announcement about that yet? Unmute yourself. No, you did not. Okay. All right. I will get that out soon. I've gotten busy. And so I also want to say a prayer of Thanksgiving because the problem with the schools might be creating me a job opportunity. Okay. Well, we will pray for your group as they learn and fellowship together. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, Any other prayer Lord. concerns? Amen. All right, well, if not, I'll uh, go back to screen sharing and we'll finish with the Lord's Prayer. <clears throat> Myra, you need to mute yourself. Sorry. All right, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen i also offer a prayer of thanksgiving for the gifts of cup and bread that sustain us and nurture us in our journeys of faith may we now be bread for the world and god's agents and incarnations of kingdom in this time and in this place and all god's people said together amen i invite you now to take a moment in silence and think about what you can do to offer yourself as bread for the world Maybe there's a, a neighbor who's lonely that you can reach out to call or write. Maybe there's somebody you haven't been in contact with in a while that the relationship feels estranged and you need to mend that relationship. Maybe there's some service you can do in the community or in the wider world. Think about ways how you can feed and sustain and nurture others and offer yourself up as God's bread for the world. Amen. I want to thank everybody for your continued donations and offerings and gifts to the church. We could not do what we do in our faith community without your financial support. Uh, if you'd like to make a gift to the church, the P.O. Box is 97, and you can send in a check. <clears throat> if you'd like to do a financial online transaction you can use the credit union to do that or you can find out talk with d about using your own financial institution but we really appreciate everybody's continued financial support and just so you're not you know we're running about 30 percent behind our gifts for the year uh, but we appreciate everybody's continued support i invite you to join yvonne and sing our closing song, a new song called Let Us Be Bread. The words will be on your screen.
invite you now to watch and listen to our charge and blessing. Please listen to the post lead. Go ahead.
Thank you, Beverly. Beautiful. It's nice to see your talented hands on the keys. I'm going to stop screen sharing so we can all see each other. And I saw in the chat that it's uh, Bob Losey's birthday this week. Is that true? Yes, his birthday is the fourth. So it's okay. okay. Well, 